You know, I really think Kleber is one of the best destroyers in World of Warships. This thing is incredibly annoying to fight against. That's the primary reason I think it's so good. As a battleship player, I've been farmed out by Kleber's more times than I could possibly count. The ship is so good at farming battleships out. The damage output is incredible, especially given the fire chance and the reload booster. This thing is so good with HE and farming out battleships, but it also has incredible armor piercing. The ship's guns are unbelievable. So good, in fact, that this hipper is going to die here. He's, he's just done. My team is gonna do a lot, but we actually citadeled him there at 10 kilometers? Yeah, this ship is pretty nasty to deal with. And it really reminds me of what um, the Kaba used to be. It no longer is that, but the Kaba used to be this flanking, incredibly fast, annoying ship to deal with that dealt a ton of damage. And as a battleship player, I often would think, well, is there really any point in shooting at it since I'm just going to miss? <laughs> And Kleber is just that, plus some, since it goes even faster and is much, much more maneuverable. Although it does lack some DPM, it really relies on that reload booster to get its DPM up for short bursts. But this speed is why I really enjoy the Kleber and the Marceau too, for that matter. Being able to reposition around the map is just so nice. At this speed, you can constantly be moving towards where you need to be to help your team win the game. Or if you're a farmer, you can constantly be moving towards the most damage potential possible. <laughs> and as you can see, the shell velocity is just insane. So Kleber is really an amazing gunboat DD. Of course, it has the downsides of no heal and no smoke. So you really rely on this ship's special characteristic of the uh, French damage saturation. Basically, this ship, as it takes damage, saturates much, much quicker meaning that every shell, at least HE shell, that hits it is going to deal percentage-wise way less damage. Armor piercing from battleships is still gonna do overpen damage no matter what. So really it's against the HE and it's really noticeable in the bow and stern of the ship. So if you ever run into a Kleber or a Marceau, really make sure you're aiming for the center hull of the ship. That one has the most hit points and doesn't saturate nearly as quickly. Um, we're finishing off the LeFan task there, as well as the poor, uh, poor Hipper, man, honestly. That poor guy getting into tier 10 like that and dying instantly. That's a rough grind, but the Kleber is awesome. The ship is really, really solid. I just don't play it particularly much since I'm not as huge a fan of the playstyle overall. But today I really wanted to mix it up and play something a little different. I've been feeling like I've been playing the same ships kind of over and over and over again in this game. And I really wanted to try out something that I knew was really good in this game, but something that I don't play very often. So as we're moving along, you notice I'm shooting a lot of armor piercing, and that really comes down to the AP doing such good damage into cruisers and battleships. Cruisers especially, since they tend to have smaller superstructures that are harder to hit with the HE, you'll notice we're shattering a lot of those HE shells on some of the more belt armor and that sort of thing on cruisers. So. Hitting them with armor piercing can be a good idea against cruisers. Battleships have such gigantic superstructures though that it's very easy to farm them out with the HE still. Um, of course, this ship doesn't really have great torpedoes. They're more ambush torpedoes, which can be really, really good in their own right. But the strength of this ship, I think, is its flexibility with its incredibly long range, very high shell velocity guns that do really good damage. And you can see where the enemies spawn. We are playing that annoying playstyle. How annoying is it if you're a Des Moines trying to help your destroyers contest a cap and hold on to a cap when suddenly from your spawn, <laughs> a DD starts opening up and firing it, just lighting you on fire and trying to take you out. <laughs> it's certainly a good distraction. And that's how I really love to play the Kleber and some of these fast gunboat destroyers is the ultimate pest, the ultimate distraction what are these people going to focus on? Are they going to focus on my teammates taking control of all of all of the capture zones? Or are they going to focus on the destroyer that's managed to get into their spawn and is farming them all out? <laughs> and oftentimes, people are going to choose to deal with the destroyer who's farming them from their spawn. They think, okay, well, let's deal with this DD first, and then we'll turn around and deal with the teammates who are taking over the caps. 
But what happens is this club air is incredibly difficult to hit. Look at the speed we're going. Uh, yeah, nearly 55 knots. And with this decent rudder shift, currently I am actually running a slightly concealment build. If you wanted the ultimate pest to be ultra annoying at long range, you'll see we can actually drop a concealment upgrade and take rudder shift instead. And oh boy, this thing becomes basically impossible to hit for all but the fastest shells at close range. So it's pretty disgusting what this ship is capable of. You'll notice we haven't actually farmed up that much damage in this game. And that really comes down to the matchmaker these days. I think you guys have probably experienced this. Um, something that I've been a little bit frustrated with is the lack of capital ships, meaning the lack of ships that are spotted with big HP pools, that, like battleships basically, right? <laughs> There's not too many of them at least in the NA queue a lot of the time. It's a little bit disappointing when I'm playing these ships where I'm wanting to just farm out the battleships, but uh, there's plenty of destroyers and uh, submarines, it seems like these days, unfortunately. It leads to a lack of ships spotted on the map, and it leads to the game feeling a little bit empty. So that's where in a game like this, where I notice that there's a few, there's not enough battleships, really. There's not enough large capital ships then I push really hard, right? That's what I did at the start of this game, and it certainly worked out for some decent damage. So if you're looking for a really good, comfortable gunboat DD to play at mid to longer ranges, Club Air should be on your short list. I honestly find it more comfortable to play than a Marceau, just due to the shell velocity of these guns, and certainly far more comfortable than something like a Kaba, since it really does have the range that the Kaba seems to be lacking just a little bit of. You'll notice how uh, easily we're able to hit this Kitakaze, um, at least at the beginning. My aim suddenly just stops working. <laughs> I certainly would need to play this ship a little more to tune in that aim and hit this Kitakaze a little bit more consistently. But the shell velocity is so good, right? Seven second lead time for a destroyer at 12 kilometers is really, really solid and quite comfortable to do, assuming that you've played with the ship a little bit and are quite used to it. You'll notice we've also... Uh, <laughs> it's poor Massachusetts, man. He started on the A flank, and he ran away to the C flank, and we got behind him. We caught up with him and got behind him. It's just ridiculous. It's a hilarious ship to play, and it resulted in 100k that game, even a confederate, so we were definitely spreading out the damage properly in this one. So not always am I going to play this kind of annoying gunboat role, but it can be a ton of fun. Since this ship really is such a good long-range gunboat, you'll notice I'm totally giving up things like concealment. There's no heal or smoke here, so there's really not much need for Superintendent outside of the maybe bit of use you're going to get out of the extra reload booster as well as the extra speed boost. But given a few different upgrades, I think that one's very easy to skip out on. It's really, really nice to get this main battery and AA specialist and... Uh, get the range and the DPM up a little bit more. Adrenaline Rush is perfect on a ship like this, and so is Fearless Brawler, since you're always going to be spotted while firing, assuming you're not behind an island or in someone else's smokescreen. We're taking Survivability Expert as well as Last Stand and Preventive Maintenance. These things really are the things to keep us alive, whereas this is the damage dealing kind of upgrades. This ship really relies on its ability to deal damage. Of course, if you can, playing it as a second line destroyer following in a Shimakaze or a Gearing or a Daring or a Holland or something with good concealment to contest a cap, and you're that second line DD that follows them in, suddenly it becomes very easy to win capture circles because this ship's firepower really, really wins DD gunfights very, very easily. So we're also running main battery modification three, giving us better reload at the cost of our turret traverse. As you noticed in, in this video, I was kind of struggling with keeping the turrets on target some of the time, given some of the maneuvering I had to do. So certainly something to keep in mind is that the turrets are slow to turn. And here again, I'm running concealment, but uh, steering gears mod two is pretty hilarious. I think giving both uh, builds a go and seeing which one works best for you would be a good option. Definitely taking propulsion mod over steering gears mod one, since we do rely on speed juking every once in a while and it's really important to uh, be able to accelerate back up to full speed after slowing down. I'm taking aiming system mod one, and even with that, the dispersion can be a bit questionable. 
you see engine boost mod one here and uh, that of course you can get for a bit of coal in the armory and that allows this speed boost to last like 234 seconds which is insane given an 85 second reload on it so it's a very long duration speed boost where it's arguable that you could use four of the speed boost in a game and five reload boosters but most of the time I don't get through that many speed boosts and uh most of the time, I am looking to use all four of these main battery reload boosters. I consider it a bit of an issue or a problem in a match where I have reload boosters remaining at the end of the game. It basically means I left damage on the table. So that's why I'm trying to go through them as quickly as I can when it makes sense. So not using them instantly on cooldown, but also not wanting to leave too many of them in uh, not used at the end of a game. So Kleber is a great ship, honestly. I think it's a really solid DD. Its issues stem from its lack of AA and uh, potentially not good enough concealment to really contest some of those ultimate cap contesters like Daring. But honestly, a really solid DD that can be a ton of fun to play. It's kind of an alternate, different playstyle, and for that, I really do like it. So let me know what you think in the comments down below, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.